the town of Musina on the South African side of the border with Zimbabwe is a good example of the country's current water woes. For the past few years, the local municipality hasn't supplied residents with regular water and taps are often dry. This despite the presence of the Limpopo River, one of South Africa's and Zimbabwe's major waterways. Musina's water crisis, like many in South Africa, is blamed on the local municipality's failures and the Vembe Council has said it is partly responsible for water shortages. South Africa's Water Department Director General Sean Phillips says his office has pressed the municipality to provide better water services by repairing broken equipment and leaking reservoirs. But while Musina has run dry because of equipment breakdowns and power cuts, the Zimbabwean town of Bayat Bridge, just a few kilometers away, has been oversupplied with water. Unlike in South Africa, Bayat Bridge's waterworks are fully functional. In Musina, officials signed an agreement yesterday to share water and infrastructure. Among those signing was Zimbabwe's minister in charge of water, Anxious Masuka. So I'm very pleased that on behalf of Zimbabwe that this day has come to fruition. It has taken years of negotiation and I thank the technical teams for having put the very best for their countries to ensure that we come to this level today. Zimbabwe is committed to supplying the maximum 15 million cubic meters of treated water per year to Musina town and we hope this uh, contribution will alleviate the water challenges but will also contribute to economic development of this region. Much program director, all protocol observed, be greeted all. Standing before you here is Evangelist Noran Dovu. I am a bona fide citizen of Messina. We are hurt. We are bleeding. We are grieved as a community. If ANC is the government of the people, for the people, by the people, is it really about the people anymore? You take decisions concerning our lives without consulting us. Honorable Minister, signing a memorandum of understanding for water, trading water in Zimbabwe. Imagine the lives of the people of South Africa handed on a silver platter to the hands of another government, another country. Imagine, water is life, sir. Water is an essential need. It's not something that we can compromise about. How safe are we? Should we have any, any problems with Zimbabwe? What becomes of our people? Who is sacrificed in the process? Mosina, Eben, area. Because we are the direct link to the border of Zimbabwe. We are grieved. We are bleeding. Water has been a challenge in our community. What is the problem? Has anyone ever reason to identify what caused the water problem in the first place? No one identified that, my, my honorable say. Is it the pipes that needs to be re revamped? Is it the infrastructure that needs to be fixed? No one communicated to us concerning that and no one evaluated or inspected that to say, community, this is what is happening. But they say we have a crisis, ma'am. I don't think we have a major crisis as such. Because Bay Bridge that we are talking about has water crisis like we are having water crisis. So can they supply us clean water when they are also having a challenge that we are having here in our town? They cannot. Hence I say no, they cannot. So now, what do we do as a community? When you are taking such decisions, I, I humble myself. I can even kneel down right now to say please consider the views of the people. Listen to them and hear what they have to say concerning the decisions that you are going to take. Because they cannot be reversible. They cannot be reversible. And this is about lives. Lives matter above everything else. Water is life, sir. Water is life. A lot of things are going wrong in our community. The hiring system is wrong. Our sisters have to raise the bed of councillors and mayors so that they can get the post that they're getting. It's very bad. Why should we raise someone's bed so that we can get what we rightfully belongs to us? We are not supposed to do that. What are we doing to ourselves, black people? What are we doing to ourselves? When are we going to rise? People are coming from all over, grabbing opportunities that should be given to bona fide citizens of Musina. Yet no one is saying anything about it. We speak, they say that we are rebellious, we cause destruction. But we are not causing destruction, we are grieved, we are bleeding, we are crying, we are hurt. 
When? Until when are we supposed to bleed? Until when? They do demarcations, they don't even consult us, the people. And they say, no, Musina is extended to this part. But did you come to us and say that, Musina, you are now growing. Musina, you now have wings that have spread this far. Are we informed about it? Nothing is communicated to us as a community. So I say, no more decisions should be taken without the consent of the people. No more deals should be signed without the consent of the people. Hence, I say, we need our water rights back. And I say, this memorandum that was signed yesterday with Zimbabwe, let it be null and void consent until you come down to the community and discuss with us and hear what we have to say about it. Thank you so much. Former South African Water Chief Dr. Mike Muller tells VOA the agreement is an excellent practical example of how neighbours can cooperate to the mutual benefits of both. Here you're talking about two communities, one on one side of the river, another on the other side. They share the same river. That's where they get their water from. But, you know, does it make sense for Bike Bridge to build a water treatment works and, you know, get all the money spent there and then Musina doing the same thing? And what's happened here is there's been a discussion about where the water can best be produced. And it was agreed that if Bike Bridge in Zimbabwe, if they could expand their waterworks, South Africa could in fact just take water from them and avoid having to build and expand waterworks on the Musina side. The deal isn't charity though. South Africa will be paying Harare for its water, although the governments have yet to reveal amounts involved. Quoted in Zimbabwe's Herald newspaper recently, Zimbabwe Information Minister Jen van Muswere said the country would benefit greatly from much-needed foreign currency.